She's far from your ordinary diplomat. She's an accomplished, distinguished businesswoman with a varied career that spans in the fields of technology, politics, and now she's thriving in the field of diplomacy. We are honored to be in the company of the U.S. Ambassador to Kenya, Meg Whitman. Thank you so very much, Madam Ambassador, for Thank granting you. us the opportunity to speak with Capital FM. You've been in Kenya for two years, but your impact has been remarkable compared to some of your predecessors, who, in fact, some were career diplomats. What, what drives you as an ambassador? Well, first of all, thank you, and thank you for this interview. Lovely morning here in Kenya. I'm glad to be back. I just got back from the United States uh, yesterday morning. Um, I think, you know, when I came to Kenya, I didn't know much about Kenya and much about Africa. I'd been here on business. But when I began to understand the potential of Kenya and the demographic trends in Africa, I said there is so much potential on this continent and in Kenya in particular. We need to tell that story in the United States. Because when I was the CEO of Hewlett Packard and of eBay, I didn't think about Africa very much. But if I knew what I knew now, it would be definitely on my radar screen and would be a priority. So we decided to try to tell that story of the opportunities in Kenya and the opportunities more broadly in Africa. And that started with that presentation some of your viewers may have seen, which is Why Africa, Why Kenya? And of course, you know, probably culminated in the state visit two weeks ago. One of your notable achievements, like you've mentioned, is facilitating a well-planned and executed U.S. state visit, a historic one for Kenya, which President William Ruto successfully led. State visits are the highest level of diplomatic engagement between two countries. What, how did you manage to secure this for Kenya? <laughs> well, I think Kenya secured it for itself. I might have helped a little bit. But, uh, so state visits are not a very common thing. The Biden administration has had just six. Um, William Ruto's was the last one. And so it's o over four years. So it's very rare. And it's a big honor for the country, and um, in this case, the country and the continent. And as you know, the Biden administration has leaned into Africa, has made Africa a priority. And they wanted to um, have a state visit with an African head of state because one had not occurred since 2008. And uh, so they um, decided on, on Kenya. And uh, obviously, I you know, had some input into that. But this was really a presidential-led decision. A total of one trillion shillings in terms of investment was, was accrued from the visit. But I think the big question that many Kenyans are pondering is when will they be able to start feeling and seeing some of these benefits? Yeah. Well, there's a number of different programs that I think Kenyans will feel right away. One is the renewal of the scholarship program between Kenya and the United States. You might recall the Kennedy Airlift, although you're too young to know. <laughs> uh, but it's called the Kennedy Mboya Airlift, which is a, a rejuvenation of the great uh, scholarships between Kenya and America, and this time sending American college students to Kenya. Because I think if we're going to change the narrative on Kenya and on Africa, American students need to come here as well. And then there will be, you know, all kinds of things that, um, you know, improve employment, like the things that happened down in Ati River with the apparel companies, the renewal of the uh, relationship between the CDC and Kemri. So lots of things, but it will take a little bit of time. But I think in the next six to nine months, Kenyans will feel some of the incremental investments. The U.S. electorate, the voters, will be heading into the ballot on November 5th to elect uh, a new president. And some of there's growing concern among some Kenyans that some of the agreements that were signed during the state visits in different fields, uh, education, trade, investment, ICT, technology, and so forth and so forth, if President Joe Biden will not get to be re-elected, that some of these agreements will not be implemented or better yet, get to see the light of day. Does this worry you as an ambassador, considering individually you've invested so much in marketing Kenya as an investment hub, not only in the region, but globally as well. Well, the first thing I would say is the agreements that were signed um, in Washington, D.C. last week and all the um, agreements that were agreed to are on behalf of the United States government, regardless of who the president is. So these agreements will stand regardless of who the president is. Um, and then from my perspective, you know, um, a journey of a thousand steps begins with a single step. And so this is, um, I think, going to have to be something that um, Kenya works on, that America works on, to tell the story of Africa and Kenya. And what's actually been kind of interesting is this, why Africa, why Kenya? Now other ambassadors are taking up why Africa, why Cote d'Ivoire, why Africa, why Malawi? And uh, so I think those are the kinds of things that get started 
and uh, you know, if Kenya continues to develop and the African continent continues to do the work to tell its own story, these will continue regardless of, of who the president is. Some skeptics or doubters are saying that by extending an invitation to President William Ruto for the state visit, the fourth of its kind, under Joe, President Joe Biden administration, is a way of the United States government trying to make him to be a surrogate or a proxy when it comes to trying to have an influence, to, to make him as a getaway for the U.S. to have an influence in the region, having, because we've seen a majority of the African states at tend to lean more on the East. So is it a way by the United States of America trying to use President William Bruto to penetrate into the African region continent? Well, I don't think America ever is able to utilize people to do that kind of work. What is true is that America is now very interested in Africa. And, and to be fair, I don't think we showed up as well as we might have over the last 20 years, maybe in the last five years, but the last 20 years. There's no question that um, some of our you know, other global competitors were here. And in life and in business and in politics, half the battle is showing up. And uh, so we're showing up more broadly in Africa. You know, look at what was done in Angola with the Libito Corridor, um, the investments that have made, been made recently across the entire continent. So we understand how important Africa is from a demographic perspective. I mean, you know this, one in four people on Earth will live in Africa in 2050. One in three working age people will live in Africa in 2050. So we need to show up. And uh, so I think, you know, um, me being asked to come to Kenya, other ambassadors, um, you know, we've had many, many cabinet members come to Africa. The vice president um, was in Africa. Jill Biden came to Kenya. So we're showing up here a lot more than we are. And obviously Kenya is one of our most trusted allies. We do a tremendous amount of work to fight terrorism, uh, you know, combat uh, AIDS and HIV and other things. So it's been a long standing relationship between Kenya and the United States. In fact, um, today we celebrate, or not today, but this year we celebrate 60 years of partnership. Among your peers in the, diplom in the diplomacy arena, especially in Kenya, you are among the few, if not the only one, who has a really cordial and warm relationship with our president, William Bruto. In fact, some Kenyans have gone as far as to likening you as Kenya's de facto prime minister. How do you perceive this? How do you, what's your reading to this perception? Yeah. So, listen, I mean, a lot of the other um, ambassadors have relationships with the government and with the president, as do I. And um, I think, you know, part of the way that has happened is I was new, he was new. And one of the things that President Ruto was very interested in was job creation. Because of my business background, that's something I know a little bit about. And so we've been able to collaborate on a number of different investments by U.S. companies here. We've been able to um, collaborate on a, a number of regional peace and security issues. But, um, you know, I'm just the U.S. ambassador here, um, have the same access as many other people. And in fact, I would say actually the heads of mission are strong together. Um, I think we had a, a, a appropriate influence on peace and security in the region as a group. And so um, the, what I've been loved is I have loved the collaboration between the other ambassadors um, here. The Western ambassadors spend a lot of time together and I think we're stronger together. Still, still on that issue of your closeness with President William Bruto, some Kenyans feel that the U.S. government, that they are there, there will tend to be some bit of bias in terms of, for example, in fighting corruption in the country. You've been close with President William Bruto. Can your relationship with him impede the fight against corruption, especially having the knowledge that some of his allies, if they haven't been mentioned, or at least there are, are allegations leveled against them of them being involved in corruption? I haven't been involved in, in too much of that. What I will say is I was impressed by uh, the president's um, speech at the Carter Center in Atlanta, Georgia, where he really laid out the case for democratic values, the case for um, anti-corruption, the case for transparency, and the case for inclusivity. So I was impressed by that speech, and I think that lays out President Ruto's point of view on democratic values, corruption, and those other things that I mentioned. President William Bruce's government seems to be a bit aggressive when it comes to the issue of taxation and taxes. Already there's a finance bill 2024, which a lot of stakeholders have spoken about it and they have voiced their oppositions towards the bill, saying that Kenyans will be overtaxed, overburdened, and this will in the long term hurt the economy. What's your general observation 
to this discussion of the Finance Bill 2024 and how President William Ruto's government is handling the whole issue of taxation. Well, the financial situation facing the country is quite difficult, as you well know. And um, the uh, IFI loans, the International Financial Institution loans, IMF and World Bank, have restrictions around and, and uh, requirements around revenue collection and the increase in revenue collection. And that is balanced by growing the economy and how to keep taxes at a minimum. And I know that the finance minister and the president are trying to balance those various pressures. And what I really admire about Kenya is the notion of public participation. When a finance bill comes out, there is real engagement by the public, by businesses, by government. And so I have confidence that uh, Kenya will come to the best answer possible, but it is not an easy answer because of the financial situation facing the country, which was driven by inflation, by frankly the U.S. raising interest rates, which meant global interest rates went up and uh, you know the challenges economically that are not of any of Kenya's doing. It just happens to have hit a country like Kenya particularly hard. You've talked about public participation, but I think the problem that many Kenyans are trying to have with is that it's a cosmetic process. Their views are never really captured in the final draft yes. that is subjected to a vote. But be that as it may, President William Ruto came into office on a platform of empowering the hustlers yes and making life bearable for the millions of Kenyans who are struggling to make ends meet daily. From your own interactions that you've had with the president, do you think he's on course of making life bearable for the millions of Kenyans who are struggling? Is he steering the country into the right direction or the wrong direction? Well, so the first thing I would say is I do not think public participation is, what did you call it, window dressing? or? Cosmetic, I don't think it is at all. I have watched the um, you know, very active participation of everyone, uh, particularly around the finance bills, but everything as well. It's, it's, been, it's a quite a remarkable process that I think Parliament listens to, I think the government listens to. And uh, with regard to leadership of Kenya, listen, you know, my view is that President Ruto is doing the absolute best job he can do in the current very difficult economic situation, which is not unique to Kenya but he's navigating a difficult economic situation. And, uh, you know, I admired things like the Hustler Fund and uh, things that were designed to, to help the hustlers. So, you know, early stages, difficult, difficult environment. This is a tough, tough economic environment globally. It's not just here in Kenya. My final question, Madam Ambassador, for someone visiting Kenya for the very first time and meeting you for the first time, he or she will be convinced you've been here longer. <laughs> In the event President Biden will not get to be re-elected and you get to be recalled back home, what are some of the things, your salient highlights during your stay in Kenya that you will dearly remember yeah. even as you depart? Well, first of all, I think the thing that um, I will remember the most is the people of Kenya. The people of Kenya are smart and entrepreneurial and hospitable and welcoming, and it has been a privilege to get to know the people of Kenya. And I have been amazed because so many companies have said to me their very best workforce in the world is the Kenyans. So that would be number one. Number two, I think, would be the beauty of this country. I have to say, people really, you know, outside of people who've been to Kenya, I don't think they quite understand the savannas and the grasslands and the tribes and, and the animals. It's, it's really quite remarkable. And then I think, you know, maybe I have made a small difference on telling the Kenyan story and why people should invest here, why it's important for um, Kenya and for Africa to grow and thrive and create lots and lots of good jobs. It's the most important thing, I think, that, uh, that we can help in some small way. And then just understanding, you know, how the country works, the culture, the, uh, you know, it's just been a fascinating and, and really remarkable experience for me. Thank you so much, Madam Ambassador, Thank and you. all the best. Thank you very much. Good.